Assalamu alaikum everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. So as you know, the syllabus for IGCSC math has changed and most importantly, the paper pattern has changed. And now you have paper two in which you cannot use a calculator. Previously you could, but now you cannot. So a lot of students, a lot of you have been reaching out and asking me how to practice questions without a calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I have questions from the specimen paper and I've taken out questions from the topic arithmetic. So inside of arithmetic, you have topics such as basic multiplication, division, uh, you have topics such as indices, standard forms, thirds, ratios, percentages. These are the kind of questions that I've taken out from the specimen paper and these are the kind of questions that we're gonna solve in today's video. So let's start, this is the very first question. Remember, no calculator and uh, I'm gonna give you some tips along the way as to how you can make sure that you, know, you don't make any silly errors and you're able to do it on time also. So let's start, this is the first question. Let's see what it says. So it says work out 0 0.01 squared. So it's basically decimal multiplication. It's very easy, it's a one mark question, but questions like these, might seem easy, but they're also very unforgiving questions. That's what I like to call them because you either get them right or you get them wrong. I mean, with one mark, it's either right or wrong. There's nothing in between. So be careful how you solve questions like these. 0 0.01 squared basically means 0 0.01 times 0 0.01. So 0 0.01 times 0 0.01. Now, there may be, um, I mean, you guys might have learned this a certain way, but the way that I like to do them is that I first ignore the decimal, I focus on just the non-decimal numbers such as one here and one here. And what's one times one? That's equal to one, okay? And at the moment, let's say the decimal is over here. Now we're gonna see how many decimal places we have in total. So we have two here because it's 0 0.01 and two here because of the same reason. So that means altogether we have four decimal places. So I'm gonna move the decimal four places towards the left. So count with me, one, two, three, four. So this is where the decimal is. The rest of the places we fill up with zeros. So the final answer is 0 0.0001. 0 0.001, sorry, triple zero. And there you go, we get one mark for this. Now let's move to the next question. Here it is. Write 57.3997 correct to four significant figures. Now when, you, when you're supposed to write something correct to four significant figures, you look at five significant figures. Basically you need the fifth significant figure to decide the fate of the fourth significant figure. So if I look at 57, so here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. This is the fifth significant figure. So since this is greater than five, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one to the previous value. But here's the problem, if I add one, to nine, then what happens is nine becomes 10. And the last two decimals become four zero. So the answer is 57.40. Now you might think, you might think that, you know, I can write this as 57.4, it's the same in value. Well, it is the same in value, but it's not the same number of significant figures as asked in the question. 57.4 would be three significant figures. However, 57.40, will be four significant figures. Why? Because every decimal that you, every zero that you add towards the end is considered significant. Okay, so that's another mark. Now let's move to the next question. So this is question number three. It's, uh, it's basically from ratios. Amy exchanges, changes 250 euros into dollars. The exchange rate is one euro to 1.10. Calculate the number of dollars Amy receives. So let's make a column for euros and let's make a column for dollars, $1 one euro, sorry, is equal to 1.10. She changes 250 and this is, sorry, 250. And here we're gonna write X. Okay, now what do we do? We cross multiply because it's a direct proportion. So X, our answer is gonna be 250 into 1.10. Now here, whether I multiply it by 1.10 or whether I multiply it by 1.1, it's the same thing. So instead, you know, to make my life easy, I'm just gonna multiply it by 1.1. And let's, let's use the method that we learned earlier. I'm going to simply multiply 250 by 11. So that's gonna be zero, five, two, and then put a cross here, multiply one by 250. So zero, five, two, let's add them up. Zero, five, seven, two. Now, how many decimals did I ignore? I ignored one decimal, so that means I'm gonna move the decimal one place towards the left, and the final answer is $275, okay? So for 200, 250 euros, she receives $275, that's the answer. Now, question number five. So we're skipping a few questions in between because remember, we're only solving questions that deal with arithmetic. So conversion, very easy. 
easy to score marks given that you know your conversions. If you don't know your conversions, you're gonna mess it up, obviously. So we're converting meter square to centimeter square. Now, let's forget meter square, centimeter square for a minute, and let's just focus on meter and centimeter. So if you want to convert meter to centimeter, what you do is you simply multiply it by 100, okay, if you're going in this direction. But if you want to convert meter square to centimeter square, no problem, just square 100 also. That's it, that's all you have to know. So here's what I'm gonna do, 0 0.17 multiplied by 100 square. So 100 square basically means we will double the number of zeros that we have already. So it's two, now it's gonna be four, so that means it's 0 0.17 into 10,000. So the decimal moves four places towards the right. So that's one, two, three, four, and now you have 1700. So the answer is 1700 centimeter square. You don't have to worry about the unit. That's already written for you. Okay, another question. Let's see what this is. The mass of a solid metal cuboid is four kg. The volume of the cuboid is 600 centimeter cube. Calculate the density of the metal, giving your answer in grams per centimeter cube. And I know at this point you might think, well, our teacher didn't make us do this, or what kind of a question is this? We're not in our syllabus. Well, it's just basic math. No need to freak out. You're given the formula and that's all you need to know, okay? So don't start blaming your teacher at this point. So we're supposed to calculate density, which is equal to mass over volume. The only catch is that you're supposed to give it in grams per centimeter cube. So that means four kg needs to be converted into grams and multiplied by a thousand. So now you have 4,000 grams. So it's gonna be 4,000 divided by 600. Let's see what we get, cross it out, cross it out. 40 upon six, we can simplify using the table of two. So that's gonna be 20 upon three. So either you can write it as 20 upon three or you can write it as a mixed number. That's up to you. The question has no specific, the question hasn't specified. So you know, we're, we're free. Or you can even write it as a recurring decimal that you want, but it doesn't make a difference. So that's it. Let's move to the next question. Okay, work out two whole two upon three plus three whole one upon two. Give your answer as a mixed number. That means we're supposed to give it the way that they have given it in its simplest form. All right, three marks. Okay, I think that's, that's a pretty big deal that you're getting three marks for something so basic. So anyway, let's convert mixed number to improper fraction. Let's start with two whole two upon three. Three times two is six. Six plus two is eight. So we have eight upon three. Let's do the same with three whole one upon two. Three times two is six. 6 plus 1 is 7, so that means it's going to be 7 upon 2. So these are the two fractions that we're supposed to add. 8 upon 3 plus 7 upon 2. So we'll obviously take the LCM, which is going to be 6. So we multiply this by 2, we multiply this by 2, that's 16. We multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, that's 21. 21 plus 16 is going to be 27, 37, yeah, 37. 37 upon 6. Now, 37 upon 6, if you leave your answer like this, I'm afraid you'll not get full marks because you're supposed to give your answer in as a mixed number in its simplest form. So we take 37, we divide by 6, 6, 6 are 36, we're left with 1. So the answer, remember, mixed number is written like this. So you have the quotient first, and then you have the remainder, and then the divisor. So quotient, it's this form. Quotient, remainder, whoops, sorry. Excuse my handwriting, please. Yeah, so it's gonna be quotient, and then remainder, and then divisor. So quotient is six, remainder is one, divisor is also six. So that means the final answer is gonna be six whole, one upon six, and there you go, three easy marks. Indices, find the value of 64 raised to the power two upon three. Easy peasy, 64 raised to the power two upon three means that you have to take the square of 64, and you also have to take the cube root. Now, what's easier? I doubt any of you know what the square of 64 is. If you do, you know, that's good for you, but I don't. So instead, I'm gonna take the cube root of 64. That'll make the number smaller and it'll be easier to take the square of it. So cube root of 64 is four. By the way, you should know all your cubes from one to 10 and you should know all your squares from one to 20 if you wanna save time in questions like these. So ultimately, it just boils down to four square, which is equal to 16. There you go, job done. Standard form, also very easy. So what do we have to do here? We have to multiply. Now multiplying standard form, numbers that are in standard form is the easiest thing there is. Remember, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. What do I mean by that? So you multiply the apples together, meaning the non-powers of 10, so 7.1 times two, 
you can do it mentally. 7 times 2 is 14, 0.1 times 2 is 2, so that means 14.2 multiplied by 10 power minus 15 into 10 power 3, that's going to be 10 raised to the power minus 15 plus 3, which is minus 12. Now, make sure to read the question carefully. It says, give your number, uh, give your answer in standard form. Is it in standard form? Not yet. So we can convert it in standard form, move the decimal one place towards the left. So technically you have divided this by 10 and as a result, you will multiply it by 10. When you divide 14.2 by 10, it becomes 1.42. When you multiply 10 power minus 12 with 10 power one, the powers are added and minus 12 plus one is minus 11 and that's your answer. Now this is also standard form, but here we're supposed to do addition. Now addition can be a little bit tricky, but remember this rule, please don't make the mistake of expanding the whole thing and then adding, it's gonna take you forever. What you should do is you should make powers the same. Notice that the powers in addition subtraction questions will always be very close to one another and the reason why they're that way so that you can make powers the same. So what I'm gonna do is, how about I make this instead of 10 power six, 10 power seven. How? I'm gonna multiply it by 10 and I'm gonna divide this by 10. So 5.2 divided by 10, 0.52, 10 power 6 into 10 is 10 power 7. Now, what have we achieved over here? We have rewritten the same number and both numbers that are supposed to be added have the same powers of 10, meaning that we can now add them easily. Okay, you can only add numbers in standard form as long as they have the same power of 10. So what's 5.2 into 0.52? Let's do it over here. You know, my mental maths, honestly speaking, is not that good. You might think that I'm a math teacher, so it's really good, but that's not the case really. So two, zero plus two is two, five plus two is seven, and five plus zero is five. So 5.72 into the power of 10 as it is. Remember, you're not supposed to add the power, divide the power, nothing of that sort. It's like you're doing five X plus seven X. The answer is 12 X, not 12 X squared, not 12 X cubed, just 12 X. So five into 10 power seven plus 0 0.5 to 10 power seven is equals to 5.72 into 10 to the power seven. There you go. Now, simplify root 32 plus root 98. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do prime factorization of 32. So I can divide 32 by two, that's 16. I can divide 16 by two, that's eight. I can divide eight by two, that's four. I can divide four by two, that's two. I can divide two by two, that's one. So that means root 32 can actually be written as, let's do it over here, two times two, times two, times two, times two. So that's five times two. We'll make a pair, a pair of two outside, another pair of two, bring it outside. I have a whole live stream on this where you can see how to solve questions like these. So two times two is four, and we have four under root two. Now we're gonna do the same for root 98. So I'm gonna take 98, I'm gonna start dividing it by the smallest prime number. So I guess that's 49 then seven, seven sevens are 49, then seven again. So there you go. So that means 98 can be written as two times seven times seven. So we have a pair of seven, we can bring it outside and we have seven root two. So ultimately it'll, it boils down to this. Root 32 can be written as four under root two. Root 98 can be written as seven under root two. Four plus seven, that's 11. And 11 root two, fellas, is your answer, there you go, easy peasy. Last question, rationalize the denominator. Now to rationalize, there's a pretty standard way that we follow, that is we multiply the numerator and the denominator by whatever it is in the denominator, but if there's a plus minus, if there are two terms, then we change the sign, we change the sign in between, okay? So that means here we'll multiply it by root two minus one, and we'll multiply the denominator also by root two minus one. So one into root two is root two, one into minus one is minus one. Now in the denominator, there will always be this identity being applied because it will always be either a plus b into a minus b or the other way around. So that means you can always use this identity, a square minus b square. So root two squared is two, one squared is one, two minus one is one, and that's it, fellas. Your answer is root two minus one. That's it, job done. So that's it. These are, yeah, that's 10 out of 10. Quite all the questions that I planned on solving today. I hope it's clear, I hope you guys are, you know, getting aware of the fact that it's not that difficult, given that, 
you know, you keep on practicing, you, you make sure you time yourself, you, you make sure that you, you know, memorize your squares and cubes as much as you can. If you do all of that, I guarantee you're not gonna struggle. So that's it, let me know what your thoughts are, let me know what video would you, you would like me to make next. And that's it, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.